Turn with me, beloved, today on this Missionary Sunday. <coughs> missionary Sunday in the Connectional Church. We agree that the fifth Sunday gives us an opportunity to gas up, to fill up, to faith up for the work that God has us to do. Amen? Amen. There is still yet work to do for the Lord. Yes, turn with me, beloved. I know that you're patiently waiting. Where to turn? Hebrews. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and the twelfth verse. And as you're turning to the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and the twelfth verse, let me say to you that to the world you might be one person. Can y'all hear me out there? Amen. But to one person, you might be the world. This missionary Sunday. It's time for us to get ready to continue working for the Master. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and the twelfth verse will serve as a text for our sermon today. And it should read close to these words. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Just give me a graceful moment to read it one more time as I prepare to use my ears to hear God, my mouth to speak, and my head to listen. So I need to clear up. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the twelfth verse, says, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the prophet. The American Standard Version of the same text says that ye be not sluggish, but imitators, amen, of them who through faith and patience <coughs> inherit the promise. I want to speak today from the subject, how hard are you willing to work? How hard? Are y'all going to pray with me? Yes. Are you willing <clears throat> to work? How many of you would agree that you live and you learn? A question for just a few more minutes. We're still in the morning time. How hard are you willing? Interesting passage that is, would you agree? Found in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, my dear sister, uh, in admonishing us not to be sluggish, not to be slowful, not to be lazy, <coughs> not to be idle. Uh, who was that, Mother uh, C? Go ahead and tell me what fell right there in your spirit with that word idle. When you are idle, an idle mind, is the devil's workshop. Yeah. <laughs> the conversation over here. The conversation went like this. What did so and so die of? Y'all know how it is. When we hear somebody die, I don't know for some reason we want to know why. How they die. <laughs> Amen. Heaven, when I die, they ask you how Reverend Bowles died. Just tell him his heart stopped. <laughs> Are y'all with me out there? Let me get back to the story. What did so and so die of? One was asked, and the other one replied, doing nothing. 
The other person said, well, that's enough to kill any man. <laughs> be aware and beware of doing nothing. Of being slothful, sluggish, lazy. The, there are a few things so blightful and deadening and damning. A whole lot of sins, but none compared to this that's mentioned in this text. Slothfulness, sluggishness, or laziness. Sloth is a carelessness or a neglect about important things. Says an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Is that what y'all heard? Anybody ever heard that before today? Amen. Martin Luther wrote in one of his sermons that the devil had a great anniversary, a convention. At which all of his emissaries and those who worked for him were convened to report the results of their several missions. As a matter of fact, this has been noted as our in gathering Sunday. The devil had his convention and he had those who were to report to come up and give their report, and one of his workers got up and said, I let loose the wild beast of the desert on a caravan of Christians and their bones are now bleaching in the sand. The devil looked at his worker and said, but well, what of it now? The imp looked at the devil and says, well, their souls were saved. <coughs> the devil said, next report. And one of the devil's workers got up and said, I drove the east wind uh, against a ship Freighted with Christians and they all tried. The devil looked at his worker and said, well, what of it now? The imp says, well, they, they all were saved. The devil with failure on his face called his last servant and says, uh, what's your report? He says, for 10 years I tried to get, watch this, one person to be at ease about his soul. And at last I succeeded, and he's ours. And the devil shouted, and the night stars of hell sang for joy. <laughs> Spiritual sloth. Being in, not involved in one's own soul salvation and having no care about one's soul in Christ or Christ's church is a dangerous soul. God wants me to remind myself, remind you today, as we answer the question on today, how much, how far are you willing to go and how much are you willing to work? Can y'all hear me playing out there? Amen. You know, if you decide to quit, amen, you could just quit. That's one thing about life, when you're throwing the towel too early, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. We don't just live to win, we don't just live to succeed, we don't just live to get rich, but we, we live to live and we live to let live. Amen. You got to keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize, no matter what the size. Never stop chasing your dreams. You should never give up because you can always look up. Amen. Look up to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord, always pushing you forward. So when it comes to that last quarter, when it comes to that last inning, when it comes to the last race, and you're not in first place, just look up and don't give up. Take advice and take advice of the wise. Keep your eye. Oh, I wish I could preach this one On the prize. We see not only the reward of a faithful servant, but also the judgment of a slothful one. He did not steal. He was very careful with what he was a trustee over. He did nothing wrong except not improve what he had. And his judgment was as great as somebody who committed murder or somebody who committed adultery or 
or somebody who let go of the atomic bomb. Let me bring it to you a different way. The chief sin of the foolish virgin. Anybody who is in here? Was not immorality, lying, or cheating, but spiritual slothfulness, spiritual laziness. Preach over the spirit. Another case in point. I'm I'm going to slide to third base very soon, but I have a feeling that somebody is not slothful in hearing the word of God this morning. Jesus in the cursing of the fruitless fig tree preached a powerful parable. The fig tree was not cursed because it was bad looking. That deserves a little amen up there. Thank God that you ain't cursed. Amen. I ain't cursed for being bad looking. Amen. Or it wasn't cursed because it didn't uh, have any particular uh, uh, type of, uh, um, of things around it, company around it. It wasn't cursed because it was poisonous. It was cursed by Christ. By who? Christ. It was cursed by who? Right. And I don't think we often sometimes recognize because we want Christ to be our blesser. Bless me, Lord. Bless this. Bless that. Bless this. Bless over there. Bless over here. Bless down there. Bless back there. And we don't recognize the same blessing Father is, is also the Father of opposite of blessings. Jesus cursed the fig tree. And he cursed it because it was not doing any good. Amen. Now many are spiritually so slothful and and this, that, that prayer is neglected. I don't dare say because a person, Deacon Hood, does not come to 62 Brockman Road that they're not praying. I dare not say that someone who doesn't come to Bible study is not reading their Bible. I would dare not say that someone who does not come to Sunday school is not studying the Sunday school lesson. But this much I know, anybody who's praying at home don't mind praying when they're not. Anybody who's loving on God Monday through Friday and even on a Saturday don't have a problem getting up on Sunday morning. Anybody, I wish I had it. Spiritual sloth means that there is little striving after spiritual things. Little striving. Don't even push. Don't even try. Don't even insist. Don't even encourage. And don't expect about spiritual things. The slothful person has no real ambition for spiritual things. Whether it happens or not, I don't care. And I tell you that this is a time when we ought to start thinking about the Lord. Put your mind on the right things because everything else is falling down. Can you see it? Everything else is falling down. And if you wait to the 11th hour at the 59th minute, you're going to run up in the church and it's still going to be here. The doors are even going to be locked. You can run around all you want, but there'll be nobody here with you except the rocks. Crying out glory and honor. Rocks will be the one testifying to you. You don't have to have it to go. The rocks on rock and roll will be preaching. And you know what the message will be. Yeah, I ain't got time to die. The rock will say, I'm going to lift up my mouth. Yes. God, give me strength to let me Lord, Lord, deliver us. The person who is not a man uh, in his right spirit of persistitude. Commitment and and and, and I used to, we used to hear this a lot. Being sold out, turn on for God. You know how you had that off switch. And sometimes they used to have back in the day, even with the light switch, you had the off, and then they had a middle set. Sometimes it didn't go all the way to on. It could stay in the middle just in case. Amen. And some of us sometimes get on that fence. Amen. And we straddle. We straddle the fence. We're not hot. We're not cold. But we're right in the middle. We're not hot. We're not cold. We're right in the middle. And God wants me to say, I'd rather have you cold because I can warm you up. I'd rather have you burning hot because I can cool you down. But when you're in the middle. Amen. Like a baseball guy. You just spit out the tobacco. Amen. 
on base three, and I'm on third base right now. Sloth engenders a negative attitude toward life. Spiritual sloth causes a negative attitude toward the church. Sloth causes a negative attitude toward other Christians. And the Christian life itself is not a life of defeat. It's not a life, oh, somebody pray for the word of God, uh, of inability. It's not a life of fear. That matter of fact, the text that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me right now so clearly says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Now in that text sometimes it's easy to become sluggish, lazy, and slothful if we put emphasis on the eye. Yes. If we keep looking at that text and say, I can do all things through Christ. But Brother Hood is not in the eye. I need to go another far and say that if we put emphasis on the word can do, we will probably resign and step back a little bit because the I part makes me kind of fearful. I'm not quite ready. I'm not, I really don't want to do it. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, 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 and the will do still has to do with the fact that I have to perform. And what if my performance is not up to the level? What if I didn't do all that I could do? What if I didn't do my homework? What if I didn't do what God asked me to do? But the, the text doesn't say nothing about I. It really doesn't say nothing about can do. Listen to what the text really says. I can do all things through Christ. All things through Christ. All things through Christ. Whether I or whether I do it or not. All things work together for good to give that love the Lord. Somebody say amen. God admonishes in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and the twelfth verse, that ye, this is it, goodbye everybody, be not slothful, do not be lazy, but followers of them, that's why it's good to identify who the them are. There got to be a day of distinction where the, the pool of people is not so general. Isn't it amazing that even as we get ready for the voting process, there are these conversations of distinction? We want to know, amen, Republicans, how we ought to think so that we can follow the same path. Democrats, we want to know who you are and how we ought to think so that we can follow the same path. Independence, we want to know who you are and how we are to think to follow the same path. And in the house of God, this is the age of distinction where there's going to be a separation from the weak and the tap, from those that will and those that won't, from those that are in Christ and those that are out, so that we can think that this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, so that we follow us.
yeah, Lord. If you let the Lord use you, God can do miraculous wonders. I said, if you let the Lord use you, somebody here today, you need to start telling God, use me, Lord. Use me in your service. Use me for your glory. Oh, just like a man, that handsome little boy, God bless you, sir. We thank you for coming to church this morning. And that handsome little boy came to hear Pastor Jesus preach. Yes, he did. He had a little lunch, a brown bag in his hand. He was looking at me like you're looking at me, young man. But the people, they were kind of sluggish. They were kind of slothful. That's big words. They were just simply lazy. They didn't bring their own peanut butter and jelly. They didn't bring their own cotton of milk. Oh, no, they didn't. And they were sitting around Jesus hungry. They were sitting, I wish I had somebody help me preach a little while, around Jesus thirsty. They were sitting 